Alright, now that we understand what the remainder theorem is all about, it is about time that we talk about the factor theorem. So just what exactly is the factor theorem? The best way to understand the factor theorem is through an example. So let's take a look at this short little example here. Find the remainder when 3x squared plus 2x minus 5 is divided by x minus 1. So according to the remainder theorem that we have learned and we have done so far, okay, we let fx be equal to 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. So to find the remainder when it's divided by x minus 1, we simply have to substitute in x equals to 1 and we have 3 plus 2 minus 5 and that will give us a 0. Now, this is weird. Okay, now I thought that you know when, when we have a remainder of 0, it simply means that there's no remainder, isn't it? Okay, and when you do a division that ends up with no remainder, what do you know about the division? Well, that this divisor is a factor, isn't it? It is a factor of the dividend. Okay, for example, if you take 6 divide by 3, okay, you won't get any div uh, remainder. Uh, you won't get any remainder because 3 is the factor. So you will get 2 in return. Alright, so what this tells us is that, well, when we, whenever we have 0 as our remainder, okay, that means there's no remainder and that means to say the divisor is the factor. So, what the remainder theorem tells us was that, well, whenever we have a dividend, where well, we can, it can be written as the divisor multiplied by its quotient plus its remainder. So, when this remainder is a zero, that means to say there's no remainder at all, okay? And that means to say this divisor and quotient are simply factors, okay? Factors of the dividend, all right? In general, when we say that x minus k is a factor of fx, what we are really trying to say is that, well, when we put in x equals to k into the function, we will get 0. Okay? This, what this means is simply to say that the remainder is 0. Okay? So the factor theorem is in fact the same as your remainder theorem. It's the same. The only difference is that for a factor theorem, the remainder will be 0. Okay, so let's take a look at one example. Here we go, a short and simple example. Now given that the polynomial fx has a factor of x minus 3, find the value of k. So the value of k is here. Okay, so we're interested in the value of k and we know that um, x minus 3 is a factor of fx. So when we know that x minus 3 is a factor of fx, what this tells us is that when we substitute in x equals to 3, okay, we get 2 um, multiplied by 3 squared plus k multiplied by 3 plus 3 should be equal to 0, okay, because this is, this should give us the remainder, but since it is a factor, and therefore the remainder should be equal to 0, okay, so from here, uh, we can work this out very easily. This is 18 plus 3k plus 3 is equal to 0. Alright, and therefore from here we can work out that our k is equal to negative 7. Alright, so this is what the factor theorem is all about.